What's up, everybody? This is Kenny Commons here of Chilling with Kenny C, right here on TMVCafe.com, bringing you entertainment to your ears. It's Chilling Anniversary Week, celebrating the 16 year anniversary show. Uh, that's later in the week, but right now, my next guest, Dynamic Duo, all the way from Austin, Texas, give you that alternative metal hall walk feel. Very talented fellas. Not only do they sing, but they play guitar. And I gotta say, man, it sounds like a lot of people on this on the music, but it's just the two of them, and they make it work. That's that's how good they are. That's how talented they are. I got the duo known as Bridges Ablaze. Got Brian and Ruben joining us. From their separate homes right now. How's it going, fellas? Oh man, it's it's going, bro. Tired. It's good. It's a good day. <laughs> yeah, man. That Tuesday grind hits different. You know, Monday coming off the <laughs> weekend. It, it, it hits hard, you know, getting back to work. You know, oh yeah. And you're just hoping that Tuesday be a little bit more improving. You know what I'm saying? So I'm uh, glad to have y'all here, man, and having this chat. Uh, so talk a little bit about um Bridges of Blaze. Very unique name, by the way. Talk about how y'all two joined forces and formed this duo. Man. Well well, Ruben, you wanna you wanna tell the guitar center story? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh back in 2014 summer, I decided to just head out there pursue music opportunities didn't know what i was gonna what i was gonna do where i was gonna live nothing so packed up my bags i went with one of my buddies at the time and uh we were just scoping out austin up north and we decided hey let's go to guitar center so we went to guitar center up north and uh i remember just walking in and as soon as i walked in man brian over there was just messing around with one of the line six amps he's just looping the track he's shredding and i mean he's going off like literally like this dude breaking necks left and right you walk past him <laughs> and um he caught me he caught me like a deer in the headlights stared i was like oh shit so anyways um i ended up getting on over to the other side of the wall amps back when guitar center had those wall amps and you know i picked up the guitar and i started shredding he starts shredding i start shredding again and we're just literally going back and forth literally just, it, it's insane tons of music and then i just hear him turn off the amp kind of killed me a little bit on the inside i'm like damn that's, that's good <laughs> and sure enough he pops out on the other side he's like hey which one of you guys are shredding uh, hey dude it's, it's me what's up man and we we exchange numbers there and there's you know it's one of those numbers you're probably thinking okay well never really gonna hear from him again or never, not really follow up but no, throughout the years we stayed in contact, um, and then through through our experiences with our past projects, you know, they get up and roll in, but then they'd fail, and a lot of repetition on that. We just decided, hey, let's do our own thing. Let's do it different, right? <laughs> yes, literally. Yeah, and and that's really what's made this project, I think, so effortless. You know, um, just the fact that it's pretty much me and Ruben owning, you know, the LLC and. Uh, Cause that's what it is. It's an LLC in the state of Texas and uh, we pay our taxes and, you know, we have a, a CPA too and stuff and it, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a thing, you know, and um, really we get along so well, we always have a, a strong overlap and, and usually any idea that, you know, me or Ruben bring just brings to the table, we're both like stoked on it usually. So we, um, we're always really synergistic and collaborative and, and, and then, you know, we will hit up like, you know, pros in the area, like a deathcore drummer or something. Hey, we need drums for the show. Can you learn these songs? You know, and then and then we'll hire the guys. Um, we're trying to get a, a you know consistent lineup right now. Um, so that way it'll be a complete band. But me and Ruben will always be the owners. Um, so the full fox of which yeah. ablaze, uh, the originators per se. The Guitar Center story, very, very fascinating, you know, because I've been there a couple of times. I'm not a musician, but I do go there, like, 
me being the podcaster, get some equipment here and there, and every now and then you're gonna hear some shredding. Like it, yep. you, you go to other guitar stores, like yeah, you might hear shredding, but you go to Guitar Center. It's a foregone conclusion. You're going to hear some shredding. You're going to hear the amps. You're going to hear people go bananas. <laughs> I mean, those guitars, these bass guitars, they do look beautiful, but I can't play worth a lick, per se. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, oh, I, I, they look so good, but I can't, I can't even play a lick of it. So I'm just going to let leave it to the professionals like yourselves. Uh, doing that, Richard. and uh, so Richards of Blaze, talented duo, man. Uh, so before, thank you. thank you, Brian joined the Zoom. Me and Ruben, we was talking of how awesome the music scene is in Austin, Texas. Like it is a music-driven city, and I, as I told him. Like, I've interviewed some artists from Austin. Like, I've even met some people that come to my city, which is at Lexington, Kentucky. We got some Austin artists that comes here, and I'm like, wow, man, these people are lit. Like, <laughs> they, 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 it, we're not talking Houston, or Dallas, or San Antonio, Austin, man. That's a, and I've, I've been in Houston before uh, with family, and that's a lovely city. But musically, Austin is where it's at, bro. <laughs> it Woo-hoo! is where it's at, man. So I'll ask, oh, yeah. you, I'll ask you, Brian, because Ruben was very hyped about it. Just talk about, man, just what's going on in the music scene out there in Austin, man. What makes it unique? What makes it different from, from other places you've been to? Oh, man, just a really cool community of really authentic musicians, of, you know, of all varieties and genres. So you have like a full, you know, flavor palette, a full color palette um, of everything you could ever want in Austin. And, you know, specifically in the rock and metal scene, I mean, there's a lot of bands that I think, um, what is it, Catch Your Breath, Colorblind, um, Fire from the Gods, they're all out of Austin, um, I think uh, Through Fire might even be out of Austin. I'm not even sure, but like really successful rock acts. I think Catch Your Breath was just touring with Falling in Reverse. Um, and it's just wild. You know, then there's other bands, you know, like, and you will know us by the Trail of Dead or Explosions in the Sky or The Sword, you know, post-rock, doom metal. Uh, even Rickshaw, Billy's Burger Patrol is kind of like a, it's like Black Sabbath meets the Ramones. Uh, you know, it's kind of the own, it's its own thing. And um, I mean, I was in a band with Leo, the front man of um, Rickshaw, like in 2015. The next thing I know, Leo is like on tour, you know, 30K monthly listeners. You know, I'm just like, what the hell? Everybody's just killing it out here. And, you know, everybody's really, really good at what they do. And everybody's just really unique and original and true to themselves. And yeah, I mean, God, there's so many other bands too. Restriction, you know, you got Gold Steps, Forever Starts Today, The Ansible, um, Pop Punk, Gent, you know metalcore um everything you could ever want yeah man i think we're like, i'm gonna have to start listening to these guys you know what i'm saying like look i like alternative i'm into the rap hip-hop metalcore i'm into pop punk i'm into i'm a i'm a musical junkie at this point in my life i listen to all types of music and you know austin man like I said, it's, it is a music-driven city. If you haven't been there, go there. And while you're at it, go go check out these guys. Where's the place? Yeah. Go check them out, you know. And uh, they're, they're going to walk it out for you guys. And guys, yeah. Go get um, burgers with us. Go get or pizza. Pizza, yeah. Get, get Home slice. <laughs> Yeah, man. I, I'm I, with all this excitement. I may need to make a trip to Austin next year or something like that. Uh, it's been a long time since I've been to Texas. Shout out to Texas, though. Um, so as I said in the uh, intro here, um, alternative pop metal music is what you have to guys put out. Um, and you mentioned a lot of bands in Austin local independent artists um who would you consider as it pertains to bridges of place 
who's some of your musical influence as it pertains to Richard of Blaze? Ooh, Ruben, what you got? <laughs> Man, so from local acts in Austin. I mean, local, mainstream, could be whoever. Oh, Man. like a Ben Sevenfold. <laughs> oh, most definitely. Uh, A7X, yeah. I got to gotta give it to them. Me and Brian, we have a special heart for those guys, man, forever and always. Um, ben Sevenfold, recently we've been in dig digging deeper. We're, we're trying to go heavier in our next round of songs. So we're doing, um, you know, for me, I'm doing Era, I'm doing a little a little periphery because I, I just love those gentle guitars, man. Like just the way they sound. <sighs> Very melodic. That's where I'm at. But then, excuse me. But then, you know, we're really trying to dig deep. Gosh, I, I really can't think of a band right now. I'm sorry, Brian. I'm having a brain fart. <laughs> he, he gave us a Vince Sevenfold. We'll, we'll work with that. A Vince Sevenfold era. Um, so, yeah, I mean, honestly, man, we're drawn from all kinds of corners of that, you know, artistic palette of flavors available, you know. And, and, and the advantage of this era is so many subgenres of rock exist right <laughs> so you have like <laughs> you have like pop punk you have metalcore you have gent you have um math rock like chan you know you have and polyphia you know prog you have um every every flavor under the sun thrash metal uh 80s hair metal like so with so many flavors available it's almost like emo you know it's like well what do you want to do you know and so we kind of sit and analyze history uh, you know, and from like the 60s and 70s all the way to now. And, and you know, it started with one, the Beatles. One turned into two, Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath. And that just went crazy. ACDC, Van Halen, yeah. freaking Def Leppard, The Scorpions, Metallica, Megadeth, Pantera. You know, Linkin Park, Rage Against the Machine, Soundgarden, Nirvana. It just goes and goes yeah. and goes. Oh, yeah. And um, And so the way we kind of approach our songs is every song is different. And we have so many influences in all of these subgenres. So... Man, we, we have like an eight string song with an eight string guitar and it's like really low tuned, like droppy flat, like an octave below. And it's it's just really genty with like Meshuga rhythms. Uh, but then it's got like Deftonesy, Linkin Park, like yeah. melody on top of like Meshuga. And then we all have a pop punk song, but that pop punk song is also fusing Polyphia guitars, like crazy. Like, so I've never heard a pop punk song like that. And I've never heard like crazy Meshuggah riffs with like a really melodic chorus on top of it. Normally there's like guttural screams. And then one of our songs is kind of math rock and like Chili Peppers meets Incubus or something. And then and then we have like a lot of like metalcore songs or, you know, like gent songs. And so we just kind of, I don't know, we, we draw from everything. Dude, like Robbie said, remember we were in the studio recording that one. Uh, he said it was like Polini, but with emo lyrics. Plimo. <laughs> yeah. It's Plimo. Plimo. Yeah, we've been trying to create fusions, you know, with genres that we have interest in. And if we think there's a compatible fit or like, the, and honestly, sometimes it just comes down to the way you write it, the way you phrase it, the theory you use, because that creates the sound. And we've been studying rigorous theory and that's been helping us a lot because, I mean, Ruben, I'm sure you've noticed it too, but you can almost, when you understand a certain theory, aspect of theory, you, you understand how it correlates to a subgenre. Yep. And then, and then, when you can command the theory, you can command the subgenre and bend it to your will versus it being like, "Oh, this is all I know, like the box. Um, we have several boxes that we're trying to command, um, and so hopefully that makes us stand out, you know It definitely makes y'all stand out. I have to say, and I've interviewed a lot of rock fans of majority of the subgenres that y'all have mentioned. And I have to say, y'all definitely one of the most versatile walk ads I've ever heard. Um, y'all just adding air. It's like it's like the gumbo. Of yeah. Energy. Like all yeah. these sub genres you got, you put some rock in here, put some punk over here, metal coal over here. Stir it up real nice. <laughs> get that sauce going. Get that. Let's get go. the sauce. Saucy up. <laughs> You know, little spicy peppers and their things like that, and y'all make it into your own, and that definitely makes me very fascinated of Richards of Place or what y'all bring, uh, the musically, and Austin, Texas, they got some real ones on the scene. So please support these fellas. 
support Ooh. all these local acts. You know, don't don't cry for the mainstream folks. You know, go support these locals and independent artists that come to your city, because y'all got a real music driven city out there, and uh, yeah, just keep supporting these fellas, and uh, they gonna give you that all the energy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and at the end of the show, you can eat the pizza and and all the other food that's left. You know, things like that. Um. Man, I want to talk about some of these songs you guys got, man. Y'all have released three songs this year. Hellbent, uh, Never Too Late, and the latest one is Forever Fallen. Now, I just played Forever Fallen before y'all got in here. And with me, I like to play songs for the first time so that you can get an authentic reaction when I chat with these artists, that's a dope song, bro. That's a dope <laughs> song. Forever man. Falling is a dope track from Bridges of Blaze, man. So I want to start with that. Talk about how that came came about, uh, Forever Falling from Bridges of oh, Blaze. Oh, man. That's crazy, man, actually, because in, it was in 2019 that we recorded The Kill, right? Uh, late 2019 and then uh, midway through 2020, you know, because we didn't even know how viable of a project this was going to be because, you know, me and Ruben had never really done the frontman thing. Like, Ruben, you did clean vocals in one of your bands, right? Yeah, it was it was like mainly screaming, so I was like a backup yeah. vocalist, but it was clean, but then there'd be parts where I would take the front for like a verse, but it was yeah. never something like this. And and I had only ever been a, you know a steering wheel and a shower singer you know my whole life right so I uh, but I, I granted I had been doing it, you know since I was eight you know I'd sing off and on throughout the years you know and sing more more than more more in certain times than not sometimes I take like a year off you know I was still trying to learn guitar too and that took you know decades um, you know uh, just so much study and so at a certain point we didn't know if this was even gonna work and then. We did it. The kill came out awesome. We were like, this is us. What the heck? So let's start doing this. And so, you know, we started just churning out demos. I joined a mentorship with some label executives, you know, from Interscope and Columbia and brought Ruben into it. And so we wanted to just impress these these executives. And so the first song we actually wrote was Forever Fallen. Um, and then Ruben was working on uh, Into the Abyss, which became Never Too Late. And... Um, and and basically forever fallen was kind of my song and into the abyss slash never too late was rubens um and we we kind of crossed over and collaborated in spots but for the most part there are separate songs and um forever fallen was like a song about all the depression i had been through uh and all the really messed up stuff you know, like the last 10 years like leading up to covid uh because it had been really hard there's some really hard moments you know like losing my dad and and you know a couple bad relationships and stuff and uh many other things as well and and so it's just very difficult and so i finally had a place to put all that pain and so forever fallen i think was my first attempt at ever even doing that and so it was a really big deal for me and then um i dedicated the video to my dad you know i put a tribute at the end of it so it's a really personal song the lyrics are, are written though in such a way as to where hopefully people can just project their own experiences onto it. Um, you know, you don't want to write things too specifically because at a certain point you almost start to alienate people. It's, it's better to kind of have an element of like, Oh, he's singing about depression. Maybe, maybe we are a relationship. We don't know exactly what, and that gives space for other listeners and other people's experiences. So they listen to it and they're like, Holy shit, this is me. And that's definitely why I definitely dig it. And just how, authentic it is relatable it is um he was mentioning lincoln park earlier Chester mm -hmm. Bennington, prime example man that's so gifted so talented at his craft and you know we feel like these musicians we, we make it feel like the, like they superheroes you know but they they just make it effortless they make it so easy then we forget that they're human beings just like everybody else. They go through things. And it was a heartbreaker for all of us when, when he passed away. Um so you know, don't you know, it you don't have to deal with depression. 
alone. You know, get the help that you need, family, friends, co-workers, anybody that's willing to listen, to hear you, or just to be a helping hand. Um, so I've I've had my share of depression, especially in 2020 when COVID hit. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I love going to music shows. I love supporting local music nearly every weekend. And then when we had to sit at the crib, I was like, damn. We really we can't do anything at all. Like of course COVID, that's dang, that's a serious thing. And you know, but it was a blessing in disguise because get the chance to rest mentally, emotionally, and you know, we'll get back to some normalcy and so forth. But yeah. you know, I'm glad that some normalcy is back so that incredible musicians like yourselves, yeah. get back and uh, do what y'all love, and uh, we all can get back to doing the things that we that we enjoy. Um, but man, check them out, Bridges of Blaze, on Facebook. They're on Instagram. Go check out Forever Fallen. Get you a tissue, you know, just in case. It's a, it's a, it's a deep song. Um, Hell Bent. That song is fire, too. Go check it out. Never Too Late. Check it out, and uh, uh, y'all got more music on the way, obviously. Upcoming, oh, yeah, um, oh, yeah, shenanigans, dude. <laughs> Man, oh. y'all ain't ready. <laughs> Literally, we, we already have our next music video finished, ready to go. It's just we're waiting for Forever Fallen just to kind of do its thing, and then we'll drop it. Our Broken Angel, and it's gonna do its thing, yep, and then uh. You know, a little spoiler for those fans out there. We 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 heard you guys, especially when Never Too Late released. Everybody kept saying, "Oh, is that Leon Kennedy?" And I don't know, Mr. Kennedy, are you are you familiar with Leon Kennedy? No, I'm not. No, he's the main character for Resident Evil, uh, oh, like the beer okay. game. Yeah. So it's it's the hair, literally. It's it's, it's the hair. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So we we decided, okay, let's go ahead and take this as, as an opportunity, and we're gonna be writing a song about zombies. We're gonna shoot it music video with me cosplaying as Leon Kennedy, and it's it's gonna be badass. Just in time for Halloween. Yeah. Ooh. In the fall. Then we get to the Halloween, obviously. But, uh, thank you to Brian and to Ruben of Wishes of Blaze for joining me this evening. This was definitely was a fun interview to do. You guys got a forever fan in me um, on this day for it. And uh, just keep grinding. Keep providing the, the, that music. Keep doing what y'all been doing. I mean, I'm looking at your Spotify numbers. It's just bananas. And uh, I just hit the follow button. So if you see Ooh. Lexington, Kentucky, and your listeners, that's me. Woohoo! Yeah, Shout girl, out to Kenny. Yes. Thank you so much, Kenny. And so, we're, a, we're a fan of you too, brother. Thank you so much for just having us. Appreciate you, folks. And, and shout out to Derek Jones. He, he made this possible. Uh, mm -hmm. Derek Jones, um, uh, Anastasia, all the artists in the agency, just a, a, an incredible talent of a, a musician. So, um, continuous success, y'all. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday evening. Enjoy your week. Thanks again, fellas. Thank you, Mr. Kenny. Thank have you so much, Kenny. All right, y'all. Have a good night. You too. All right.